I mean, I was going to say more exciting <laughs> news, but it's really not. It's sort of depressing slash what we expected slash, yeah. I so, I had high hopes. Yeah. We had high hopes, but we did talk about why we thought it would be rejected. So, unfortunately, uh, Bardwell's house, your house, got rejected as a free location. Um and we did expect this because it's a private property. We talked before about how they uh, said they would deny all private properties. And we have seen that. I can say from our side on the FPV Freedom Coalition, we've had quite a few at this point denials of FRIAs mm -hmm. and not only ones that are at private residential properties uh, for many other reasons as well. And I know some of the other CBOs are seeing this in the same way. Yeah, I love how, as explained, Allowing Frias in every backyard would undermine the benefits of remote identification generally. No shit. No shit. That's the point. That's why I wanted a free in my backyard. Also, quote, there really need to be quotes around this benefits of remote identification. Such as they are. Um, also, I reject the idea that my home is a housing development. I'm sorry. Have you been to my neighborhood, FAA? My neighborhood is just, it's just a, it's not a housing development. Okay. But, uh, it is, it is, uh, yeah. Um, they may yeah, negatively also, impact wanna... the safety and security of persons and property on the ground. I, you mean like I have been doing for the past five years with no incident at all, but you know, like you sure. could still do when you put a remote ID transponder on, right. nothing changes. The remote ID That's... transponder is not going to stop me from flying over their houses, which I generally don't do, by the way, because I'm concerned we, about their safety and security. We previously discussed the FRIA PEA, which is a programmatic environmental assessment that people are going to have to do for each of the FRIAs that get approved. Um, and... Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the idea that any of this is necessary is crazy. But part of the thing they say in the PEA is, you know, is this, you know, they, they go through a bunch of different things and it doesn't stop it. Is this already a flying site and will be this be a flying site with remote ID? Because you got to think about it. For some reason, they're saying that it doesn't matter if there's endangered birds here. If you're yeah. going to fly with remote ID, it only matters if you don't have remote ID. Right. They're not banning you from flying in that spot. They're just saying you can't fly here unless you have remote ID. Yeah. So it really makes zero sense. It makes like zero you, sense. It makes zero sense. It's, it's, I mean, there's it's not just, even a semblance of attempting talk. to make sense. Yeah. I mean, the sentence is grammatically sound, but, yes. you know, like, we can't let you fly without remote ID because it might impact the safety and security of the also, people in your neighborhood. That doesn't telling, follow. That doesn't follow. You're telling you're telling me that I'm going to break the rules. That's what you've assumed, right? Because <coughs> I'm marking out my land. And why is my land any worse or better based on remote ID? The goal of remote ID is to identify me in other places. I'm over my property, right? right. Like, so it's just it's really... Pretty, it's, it's pretty clear when there's a drone buzzing around my house who it yes. belongs to. That's a really good point, yeah. Blunty. The point of remote ID is to identify the person flying the drone. That's all it does. It doesn't stop you from flying in a legal or illegal location. It only identifies you when that happens. If I'm flying, have no way to see it. So it's not like it helps so, the aircraft that are so above if your I'm, house. So if my neighbor, if my house was a Freya and I flew over my neighbor's house, I would be violating the rules because I would be Correct. outside of the Freya. So marking my house as a Freya doesn't in any way affect the safety and security of my neighbors. I would still need remote ID to fly over them. It's hypoc It's basically, it's, I mean, it's really hypocrisy. It's, like, it's is just bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah, it it's is. Bullshit. Um, okay, well. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, we're expecting this to keep happening. Also, just so anybody knows, there have not, there has not been any accepted Frias. The Frias will not be accepted. No, not any PEA AMA is, fields? No, because the PEA needs to be complete before we see an acceptance. So the programmatic environmental assessment has to be finished. Like, there was a comment period that has ended. Uh, they've got to go through now and post it. And then once it gets posted, I think it's like 60 days and then they can start working on it after there's time for people to like sue over it or whatever, however it works. So um, we don't expect to see free as approved until a month or less for before the date, September 16th. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, I at my uh, when, when remote ID first was floated, there were plenty of people who said F this and checked out 
and just, you know, through the middle finger. And um, my attitude has been, you know, we're going to keep fighting uh, to try to see what we can get uh, and try to make things as good as they can be. And, and I still feel that way and value that work. The work that people like you, Dave Messina, the FPV Freedom Coalition, attending gobloads of meetings and phone calls and writing reports and letters and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I mean, but, I just uh, want to say literally just getting in the same room together all the time and talking about this to figure out what the heck is even going on, I think is just, mm -hmm. it's just crazy, right? I feel like there's been some benefit to that, but at the same time, it's pretty clear that like, it's pretty clear that a lot of the concessions that uh, it seemed like we were going to get have not really panned out. Like when remote ID, one of, uh, the existence of free is, has is a concession to people who say, you know, I can't put a remote ID transponder on my aircraft for various reasons. I'm like, okay, well, you can fly out of Freya. But the, if they're not going to actually make any Frias, then that concession is meaningless. Yes. Uh, um, oh, already lost it. Yeah. All righty. Uh, well, we're going to keep fighting. Solo says, sorry, you were all played. Oh. I mean, what would we have done differently? I don't think anybody said, I guess we will take the FAA at their word and assume they're operating in good faith. Oh, no. That I mean, turned RDQ, out not to be true. RDQ literally sued them. I mean, I, the, the right. narrative that nobody, that nobody, nothing can be done, so nobody should have tried is ridiculous. Like, if right. you want to be that way, you can. But we right. would like to attempt to make a change and attempt to try to change right. things that we have no in one was, some ways. No one was played. There's a lot of language and a lot of these rules, and there's a lot of ways that these things have been formed that are different because of the impacts that we've had. Uh, one thing we just saw is the BVLOS ARC, or mm -hmm. sorry, request for comment is what it is. And the request for comment specifically talks about shielded operations, which was not in the FAA's vocabulary before Dave Messina brought it in and put it into the BVLS arc. Yeah. And now they are considering shielded operations to be possible in the future. Shielded right. operations for people who don't know is flying under trees means you're not, uh, basically you're not concerned with right of way for planes. They still seem to misunderstand it in the request for comment, but that's part of the request for comment is hopefully we can explain to them uh, their misunderstandings about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed uh, that, oh, well, we'll just rant about this for an hour. That would be terrible. I'm annoyed that, that there, the people who said, this is bullshit, the FAA is not operating in good faith, they're never going to give us what we want, and therefore I'm checking out, and I'm just going to throw the middle finger and be a rebel. And there are other people who said, I acknowledge that the FAA may not act in good faith and doesn't want to give us what we want, but I'm going to still engage and try to fight and see what we can get. And then at the end of that, when the FAA ha turns out to have acted in bad faith, the people who threw the middle finger and checked out are like, you guys are chumps. It's like, we're not, it's, we're not chumps. Because we, we also knew that they might not be operating in good faith. We weren't going in with stars in our eyes. I say we yeah. as if I actually did any of the real work. It's really you guys like at the FPVSC. Um, and the people who are just like, F this, I'm out. In some ways, I mean, if, if we're chumps, they're quitters. Right. Which is better. Yeah. There's, yeah, I'll just say on a day-to-day -day basis, you guys definitely don't have a perspective on, I mean, especially with comments like that, on what has changed based on the presence of people like us talking for our hobby because yeah. uh it would be a lot worse if we weren't there stopping the language that would have been interjected into every one of these arcs over and over again um that dave messina fought and argued with people and has made uh, almost a name for himself in a bad way at this point because people know who he is and he's going to argue because he cares about the rights of us and mm -hmm. so uh, i would just say we would be doing news stories about how terrible the language is in insert rulemaking thing here but we're not because those were removed because Dave was there to make sure they weren't there. Mm -hmm. So Claymore FPV, both the quitters and the chumps are correct that the FAA is not operating in like good faith and in, in doesn't intend to give us everything we want. Both, both, both approaches are aware of that. Um, 
It's just one one person says, despite the fact that this guy doesn't want to give me what I want, I'm going to keep fighting. And the other side says, I don't think I can win this fight, so I'm going to check out and try to escape. I would and, also... And the, between I would those also, two, I, I, I know which one I think is more honorable. I would suggest the, there's probably, the, there's probably okay. three. Because there's people who don't care about complying at all, and that's fine. Right? So this would never have any effect on you either. So who cares? Until you get caught. Right. But at the end of the day, they they aren't going to care regardless of changes that were made or anything. They're not going to do any of them. It'll just right. be maybe better for them when they get caught. Then there's another group of people who say, hey, these are terrible things. We don't want to do them, so we're not going to participate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the kind of group of people you're speaking to, which is like, I totally get that you don't want to do anything about it, but some of us did. And, if, and this is a black and white situation, as I already explained. There were changes that were made. Um, that you weren't aware of because they didn't go into the language, right. and now those changes Good aren't point. part of it. So now it's better for the so people it's who easy. do care about what you're, what you're saying, I think, is that it's easy to see the ways in which groups like the FPVFC lost because yeah. this new rule comes out and it doesn't. It contains the bad things that that you fought against, and therefore you failed to have them removed. But it's it's easy to miss the victories because yeah. the bad things that would have happened if you hadn't fought didn't happen. And therefore, yeah, no well, one knows that they exist. I would suggest one of the big things we're concerned about right now, something we just talked about, which is the BVLOS, I'm sorry, the uh, counter UAS arc. So the arc that basically is going to be, hey, we need to figure out how to get rid of drones in the sky, like counter the UAS in different situations. We tried really hard to get on that committee so that we could fight the bad language that will inevitably in be injected into that bill. Yeah. However, the only people related to anybody on that is the AMA. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect them to fight like we do on in those situations, you know, right. and unfortunately, um, unless we can get in there as subject matter experts somehow, and even then you don't want to like ruin your chances because you're there yeah. on somebody else's accord. You don't want to be too argumentative. You know, we can't fight for the changes that we want to fight for. So I, yeah, yeah, there's a lot going All on right. there. And um, well, yeah, we're going to, we're going to wrap this up. I feel like we, I was, we, we talked about this long enough. I want to say it, it bums me out to see the P I don't, I don't have a negative judgment of people who say this is a hopeless lost cause. I'm just going to do my thing. I don't like uh, everybody has to decide how, whether what fights they want to take on for themselves. But I do really uh, it annoys the shit out of me when people like Dave and, and the FPV Freedom Coalition and, and you sign up to fight a a, a, a absolutely unwinnable battle against inconceivable odds, bust their ass to do it, make tiny incremental gains and get called chumps when they don't overwhelmingly come out victorious. It's like, well, you know, I, I guess I, yeah, that bu it bugs the shit out of me, you know, because which yeah. is easier fighting or saying I'm out of here. I'm just going to do my thing. It's harder to fight. And for those who choose to fight, I respect that. So. <laughs>